Really Nice Headphones Productions presents. <laughs> now, greetings and salutations. How y'all doing? I figured I would post a quick video and kind of let you guys see what I'm doing lately and show you some of the stuff that I'm using to do my other job, which is a nighttime announcer for WZBB, a radio station in the western part of Virginia. And I have been doing that for about a year now. Those of you who follow the channel closely will remember that I posted a video similar to this when I first got this set up, up and running. And of course, it's been perfected a bit since then. So we're going to show you around and talk a little bit about how all that works. So uh, let's start over here on this machine on the left. This is the radio station computer that allows me to get into the server. Uh, at the radio station. The radio station is licensed to Stanleytown, Virginia. The studios are in Bassett, a little part of Bassett called Oak Level, to be precise. And that is in the western part of Virginia, up in the mountains. I live in the eastern part of the state. I'm 250 miles away. I used to work for this radio station years ago, and a friend of mine bought it. We worked together there 25 years ago. He said, do you want to do the night show like you used to? And I'd been out of radio for like 12 years, and I said, well, yeah, but I ain't moving up there to do it. And he said, no, you can do it remotely. That's how we're doing a lot of stuff. And I said, okay. And so we actually have uh, three different people that contribute to the on-air presentation every day. And one of them is in South Carolina, another one's in Maryland. I'm in the eastern part of Virginia, and we all do it using this kind of software. And we try and keep it as topical and as up-to-date as possible. You can record something with this stuff 10 minutes before it's supposed to go on the air. So it's it's damn close to live. Uh, you know, it used to be, I said, live radio at all costs. These days, I'm like, no, I want good radio. And I don't really give a damn if it's live or not, because economically speaking, if you want really talented people to show up and do a live show every day, that's going to be extremely expensive. Whereas, you know, I can do this, and it takes me an hour, two hours, three hours to record a show. It's really not that big a deal, and it's it's a lot of fun to do it this way. So you can have that debate in the comments if you want to, live radio or record it or whatever. Uh, I think that we put out a really good product. Anyhow, uh, this piece of software that we use is called Wide Orbit. You can see that on the meters. It's actually a Google product, and it is the combination of the old Scott automation system for radio from 25 years ago and Maestro, which is another automation system. So if you've been around the business at all, you know what I'm talking about. If not, that's just gibberish. Don't worry about it. And we have mixed feelings about it. There are things about it that we like, and there are things about it that we don't like, but we're doing the best we can with what we got. And um, so this is running on a computer that's running Windows 10. This is access to the actual server itself. So I am VPN through a secure tunnel into the server. And I have access to all of the audio files there. I can find things and I can edit them. And I can do it um, on this machine. And that is actually really cool because I've been going through the music library. One of my... Big jobs the last two or three weeks is I have loaded in like 800 songs, replaced things that were in the library. The song library that this station has is 25 years old, and there's like well over 10,000 songs in here. And most of it sounds good, but some of it didn't sound so great. So we were trying to update with that stuff with you know clean stuff that's never been compressed. And I don't mean compressed audio, but like run through a codec. Because when we first set this system up, it was Scott. This was back when I was there in 1995 or 96. And um, it was using a compression scheme called Aptex. We're talking about data compression. And then that was transcoded to MP2 at some point. And then nowadays we use linear wave files. So we're trying to get things straight from CD and put it in the system because that's what's going to sound the best without any uh, codecs, any loss or anything. So that's what I've been working on. I just did about 800 songs. So let me see if I can pull up something out of the... I've got a song selected here. And by the way, that's where the studios are for the radio station is in Bassett. So it's telling me that this is going to come from the server in Bassett. And it's going to ask me if I want to launch this. And I'm going to say, yeah, I'm trying to do this through the phone. Sorry, folks, if it's shaky cam. 
and that opens up Adobe Audition, and they have a special plug-in, Wide Orbit does, that makes it interface with their audio storage format, which is proprietary. Yeah, this doesn't sound very open sourcey, is it? No, it's not. Although I did talk to the folks at Wide Orbit not too long ago when I was setting up something and I needed some technical assistance. And they basically said that for version 5 of Wide Orbit, they are looking at shipping that for Ubuntu, which I told them that if they do that, I would beta test it for them or whatever I could do to make that happen. So that was pretty cool. So anyway, that's loading up in the background. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Right now, let's show you the audio chain because somebody's interested in that. So between these two monitors, and I know it's kind of dark and you can't see it because it's in this a shadow and it's a dark colored microphone, it's an Audio-Technica AT2020 condenser mic, okay? And that is plugged directly into, back here, just sitting on the counter, a DBX mic processor. So this provides phantom power for the mic, and it's got a compressor, and it's got a de and it's got a noise gate, and there's EQ in this. I don't use much of it at all. You can see, you can see it blinking when I talk, so it's actually up and running. It runs all the time. I don't use a lot of the features, like I said. I use the compressor and the de and the noise gate, because I absolutely have to have one in this really live room. Um, and that's the 286S, really nice box. So anyway, that is plugged into this box down here, if we go under the table, and uh, you can just kind of see it there. That is a uh, Focusrite Scarlet Solo, uh, which is kind of a weird little box, and we had to jank around with the software to get it to work because it's, uh, it sends digital audio into the computer in kind of a weird way. Instead of a stereo pair, it sends the left channel only, and you're supposed to figure that out for the microphone. The left channel is your mic, and the right channel is an instrument, and then, of course, you're supposed to load that into a multi-tracker, and that's not what we're doing here. But we did get it to work, and um, it's a good-sounding box. And then I plug headphones into that box so I can hear what's going on in the computer. And those are AKG K240Ms, which I have fallen in love with again. These are the later versions of those. Also, another really great headphone from AKG is the um, M220 or the 220M. Uh, they're very nice. A little bit cheaper than the uh, K240, but the uh, sound is just as good, and I think maybe even a little richer. I use those on my big stereo. Anyway, so here are the computers down here. It's a little Dell Octaplex. That's the radio station computer running Windows 10 Pro. And then next to it is my big old pedestal server precision workstation uh, from Dell. And that's a T5400. And that's running Linux. Now on this machine, I run uh, software that uh, it's actually just do it in a browser. This is called Promo Suite. And it gets me messages and things that I'm supposed to talk about on the air. So if you listen to tonight's show, I'll talk about the Southeastern Outdoor Supplies Big Buck Photo Contest. And I have everything on this computer just set to huge. It's a teleprompter. Uh, it makes it easy for me because I just squinted everything anyway. So I want to make sure it's nice and huge. That's the way it's set up that way. And I use the multiple screens to switch back and forth here. Like here's a news story from UPI that I talked about on the show. So that's just from the UPI website, and that's where I got that. And then, of course, we're talking about Christmas fun facts. We're doing that for the Christmas holiday season, so here those are. Uh, so this is where all my information comes from. It's very important that this machine be up and running and reliable. And I have to say that Linux Mint 20 has served me really well. I installed that when I was doing a review video about it, and I just left it alone. I just absolutely loved it. And you can go back and look at that video if you want to, but I... I, um, let me go ahead and close that since I've shown you Promo Suite, but I dolled it up to look just like Linux Mint um, 17 because I used to love that particular distribution, and that's the way I've been running it. Absolutely, absolutely loving it. So this uh, Dell computer here has two Intel Xeon processors, four cores each, no multi-threading, so that gives it eight threads. It's an old machine. And this machine has... I believe it's an i7, so it's four cores, multi-threaded, eight, and 16 
gigabytes of RAM, and the Linux machine has 32 gigabytes of hardened ECC server type RAM. So that's the system that I'm using every day. And the nice thing about this radio station computer is it isn't mine. I don't put anything personal on it at all. There's no personal information of any kind. It's just for work. And what I do then is, if it breaks, I'll just box it up and send it back. <laughs> if I can't fix it myself. That way I don't have to deal with Windows garbage. Okay, so this is the song that I loaded. And this is what I've been doing, is just grabbing FLAC files that are on this machine. I took a lot of my own personal country music library and turned it into FLAC files from CD, and I have been reloading stuff. So right now, if you hear like Garth Brooks, Alabama, Trisha Yearwood, uh, Randy Travis, all those kind of older artists, that's my stuff. That comes from my CD collection. Uh, we're doing that just simply because of the fact that this is a very old music library. And it's been transcoded several times. It started out as Aptex, and then it became MP2 when they did an upgrade. Uh, this was back before people had digital music in their pocket, you know, when we started doing that back in the mid-90s. So it, it, the files started out as Aptex files, which is highly proprietary. That's a compression format, data compression, not audio compression. And then it became uh, MP2. And then they were transcoded to WAVE, which is what we're using now. So we use linear files. So what we're trying to do is go back and get linear audio instead of having been through any sort of processing. And all the new stuff is blasted so hard like that. You see how loud that audio is? What we're doing is, is just we're just normalizing it to minus three and letting the uh, processing take care of it. We have some really sophisticated audio processing we use on our stream. So if you go to v999fm.com and you uh, listen to our live stream, it sounds really, really good. And it takes care of apparent levels and loudness and all that stuff. We just sort of throw stuff at it. Now to record a break, I load up the log. So you see up here, I've got a log up here. And this is for, to, this is for tomorrow, actually, tomorrow's log. I already recorded today's show. And over here on this side, it tells me what's going on and it shows me what's scheduled. And then right in the middle there, you see where it's got the, it says uh, voice track. That's what you're looking at. So this is over here on this side. And then I can record this. Now you are not going to be able to hear this. I wish I could like do a break and let you hear what it sounded like. But if I put even a smidgen of music from YouTube, uh, on YouTube, uh, from these new country songs, it immediately gets identified and flagged. So you won't hear a thing, but you'll watch it work. So when I hit the space bar the first time, you see it counts down. And it's counting it down, all right? And the microphone is on and ready to go. And you can see when I talk, that meter's pegging. I'll tell you more about that in just a minute here. So the song ends, and I hit the button again to start recording. And I say, hey, how you doing? What's up? This is Joe Collins. Thanks for hanging around with me on the radio here. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Very cool. And then I open up uh, the next song. I go ahead and start playing that, and then it's going to... Uh, put my voice over the beginning of that song and I talk up to the intro. See how it counted down to that and that's how it works. Now that break is actually recorded and if I don't change that break between now and tomorrow night, it'll play. <laughs> so what I do in that situation is I just do this. I go, I just go ahead and start it. I will re-record this tomorrow. And you see again, it counts down. All right. And I just record like a half a second of silence there. So if for some reason I don't get to record tomorrow night, and that should happen to play, we, it won't be me running my mouth talking to you guys on the radio station. So in order to get it to upload to the system, I just move on to the next break. And in the background, what this thing is going to do is it's going to go ahead and upload that to the server, and it will be ready to play tomorrow night. So that's how that works. I mean, it's really super simple once you get your head wrapped around the idea. Now, the only problem that we have with it is, is that the way this works remotely is that when it goes to play a song, it doesn't play the whole song. It doesn't go and grab the whole song out of the library. The software creates snippets, 
where it'll play the beginning and the end of the song so you can hear it. You don't hear the whole record. You don't need to in order to record. You just need the beginning and the end. And sometimes the way this thing creates its snippets can cause problems. They can be malformed or missing or whatever. That's been a bit of a pain in the butt. But it, it works good enough. And this is actually really old software. And I don't want to change it because I know how to make it work. And I, I know how, you know, I can do A here and then it'll sound like B on the air. And I know that. Now these meters up here, you notice that when I was playing that stuff back, so I can uh, go down here, for instance, where's my mouse? Because I can't see anything. I'm looking through the phone, guys. There it is. So if I preview this break, let's go back up here, the one we recorded. And I'm going to hit preview. It's going to play that back in the headphones. You guys can't hear it, but now you see the meters moving. They're all pegged out. You see that we are not running at the same level that it, they were running when this software was created. We're doing something kind of different these days, and it works out fine on the air, but as far as the meters are concerned, it just looks like we're banging everything. So I'm not paying any attention to that, so you don't pay no attention to that either. It's just because we're not, we're not doing those same levels. So that's what it sounds like, and that's how it works when you do a preview. And that's what I do all day. So between that and loading up music, I have been one very busy little boy for the last couple of weeks. It takes me anywhere from two to three hours to do the show. Especially three hours if it's complicated. I like to take my time, make sure there's good content in there. You can listen if you want to. You go to b999fm.com and you click on... Uh, Listen live, and it'll take you to it. Now, that stream sometimes will ask you to take down your ad blocker. We're not sure why, because it's not serving ads. But it, it, it'll, it'll say that anyway. And um, uh, so you, you can feel free to go ahead and pause your ad blocker on that, and it'll be just fine. I don't make any extra money for telling you to go listen to the live stream. Somebody... On a video way back, it said, it's cringy that you tell people to listen for, to your radio show. And it's like, why? And I was like, I don't make any money off of it. It's a local radio station. We just happen to stream as a fringe benefit. We do have listeners all around the world, man. I, I know that people listen in Germany and Australia and Canada and Mexico. And I've heard from you guys. So thank you for that. And you can check it out if you want to. So anyway, I thought I would tell you, you know, give you guys a little tour of what I was doing. This is what I do. Like I said, check it out at b999fm.com. I'll put a link in the description for this video. And this will most likely be the last video that I'm going to post for the year here. So let me take this opportunity to wish everybody a very happy holiday season and a much brighter new year for 2021. One more piece of software I didn't talk about. I, yeah, I've been using Adobe Audition, but for a lot of stuff, I'm using a program called Ocean Audio to... Um, do audio stuff. Let's see if we can take a look at that real quick. And if I type in O-C-E-N, Windows will find Ocean Audio, and it did. Sorry for the shaky cam work here, folks. I'm just recording this on the phone, so let me show you what that looks like. This is a cross-platform program. It also runs on Linux. It's a very simple wave editor. And let's just record something here. I did a video about this on the channel when uh, a while back I did it. Um, I don't use it on Linux anymore, but I certainly do use it for recording <laughs> uh, commercials and things for the radio station because it's so easy, and it was easy to interface with that um, Focusrite Scarlet Solo, so I could tell it to take the one channel and turn it into a stereo file and program that. Uh, so when they asked me to record voiceover stuff for the radio station, this is how I do it. I do it right there. No, I don't want to save it. I don't I don't want to save it. I want to stop, man. Just quit. Just no, I don't want to do this because I'm done with this and I'm done with this video. And where's the mouse? And let me see if I can find where to click it. And it's like, oh, there it is. Okay. All right. So you get the point. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll talk again soon. Look forward to your comments and suggestions. Later.